Hey everyone, my name's Trevor, and in this video, I'm going to show you a simple but effective way to display and manage NPC names, portraits, and different layouts for a dialogue system that's built in Unity and uses ink. By the end of this video, we'll have built a system where a portrait and name slot can easily be changed per line of dialogue, and we'll just as easily be able to change the layout of the dialogue panel, in this case, making the portrait and name appear on either the left or right side. Just to note, this tutorial is somewhat of a follow-up to a previous video I made in which we built a dialogue system with choices. You don't need to have seen that video to understand this one. However, I am going to use the dialogue system we built in that previous tutorial as the starting point for this one. So if you're just getting started with trying to build a dialogue system and need a starting point, I highly recommend checking out the other video first and then coming back to this one afterwards. Also, as I mentioned, we'll be using ink to write our dialogue, which does play a pretty significant part in how we're going to manage our NPC names, portraits, and layouts. I won't be covering ink syntax in much detail for this video, but we're going to keep things pretty simple and I do have an entire video on how to write dialogue with ink that I'll put in the description of this video if you're interested in digging deeper. And of course, the source code for everything we're about to do can be found on GitHub, which I'll also link to in the description of this video. With all of that said, let's take a look at how we're going to do this. In our ink dialog files, we can use these things called tags to add metadata to any line of dialog. Each tag simply gets read into Unity as a string, so it's entirely up to us how we want to structure them. One good way is to set up your tags in key value pairs, where the key represents some action we want to perform in our C-sharp code for that line of dialog, and the value represents some data to be used for that action. In this example, the hashtag symbol indicates that this is a tag. Speaker is the key, and Bob is the value, which are separated by a colon. We can read this tag into Unity as a string, then parse it into the key value pair, and then perform the action for that key using the value. And that's exactly what we're going to do to set the display name of our dialog panel. And likewise, we'll also use tags to set the portrait and layout of the dialog panel. Except in those cases, the values are going to match the name of an animation state that we'll set up in Unity. Then, when we read that tag in, we can play that animation, which will change the portrait or layout accordingly. So just to recap, when we get a tag with the speaker key, we'll set the display name text in the dialog panel to the tag's value, and when we get a tag with the portrait or layout key, we'll play an animation that changes the portrait or layout. Of course, we only need to use these tags in our ink dialog when we want to trigger a change, so we don't need to add tags for every line of dialog. Alright, now let's jump into Unity and implement this. As I already mentioned, we'll be starting with a Unity project created in a previous video. I'm going to give a quick overview of the important parts that are relevant to what we're about to do. The project already has the Unity Ink plugin installed, as well as TextMesh Pro, which we'll be using later in this video. We have a scene with two NPCs, and when you walk up to one, you can press a button which will display some dialogue. The dialogue itself is written in ink files that are attached to the NPCs using a dialogue trigger script. When an NPC is is talked to, it passes that ink file off to a singleton class called the Dialog Manager. The Dialog Manager is responsible for reading in the ink file and then setting the dialog text and choices according to each line of dialog. For this tutorial, the Dialog Manager is where we're going to handle parsing and routing the ink tags, which I'll explain more once we get to that point in the video. I've also created some art ahead of time for the portraits, which you'll be able to find in the art directory of the project. Now that we have an understanding of what the project looks like, let's get started by adding the portrait and name sections to the dialog panel UI. Under the dialog panel game object, which is a parent game object to everything that makes up the dialog panel, we'll right click, go to UI, and then panel. We'll name this game object portrait frame. Then we'll change the image color to be black and bring the alpha value up to 100. Next, we'll anchor the position to the right side of the dialog panel. Under the Rect Transform component, we can click this box, hold Alt and Shift, and then click the right middle option. We'll change the width and height to be a good size to hold our portraits, so a width and height of 140 looks good, and then we'll also give it a X position of negative 5 to give it some space from the side. Next, we'll right click on the portrait frame, go to UI, and then Image. We'll call this Portrait Image, and then change the width and height to be just a bit smaller than the portrait frame. 
Then I'll drag this default placeholder art into the source image slot for the portrait image. Next, let's create a frame to display the speaker's name. We'll right click on the dialog panel, go to UI and then panel, and then we'll name this one speaker frame. Just like we did with the portrait, we'll change the color to be a bit on the darker side and also bring the alpha up to 100. Then we'll anchor the position to the bottom right corner, change the width to 180, the height to 40, and then in the scene editor we'll drag it into position. I think x equals 15 and y equals negative 10 looks pretty good. Then in the scene hierarchy we can click on the speaker frame and then use the shortcut Control D to duplicate it. We'll rename the duplicated one to border and then drag it onto the speaker frame so it becomes a child. We'll change the color of the border to be a solid black color and then uncheck this fill center checkbox so that only the border shows. Then we can right click on the speaker frame, we'll go to UI, Text, Text Mesh Pro, and then we'll name this one Display Name Text. We'll set it to have a default value of three question marks, change the font size to be a bit smaller at 28, and then change the alignment to be center and middle. While clicked on display name text, in the scene editor be sure to drag this yellow box in a bit to set its boundary. We'll also have to adjust anything else on the dialog panel that might need to be repositioned now that we've added some components. In this case, we just need to change the text boundary for our dialog text so it doesn't run into the portrait. And that's it for the UI components. Next, let's create a new ink dialog file that has some tags. For the purposes of this tutorial, we'll have two characters, Dr. Green, which of course is the green rectangle in our scene, and Miss Yellow, which of course is the yellow rectangle. In the dialog folder, of the project, we'll right click, create, ink, and then name this file Dr. Green. Then let's double click it to open it up in the inky editor. I'm just going to write out some simple dialogue where Dr. Green will be speaking most of the lines. The player will be given a choice whether they feel happy or sad, which in turn will make Dr. Green feel happy or sad. Then there will be one line of dialogue that's spoken by Miss Yellow, where she claims that Dr. Green is not actually a doctor. And last, we'll make the dialogue continuously loop as long as the player answers yes to this final question. Next, let's add some tags to define who's speaking. On the first line, we'll put a tag to set the speaker to Dr. Green. Then on this line, we'll change the speaker to Miss Yellow, and then on the line right after, we'll change the speaker back to Dr. Green. That'll do for the speaker tags, but now let's think about portraits. At the very start, I'm going to set the portrait to Dr. Green Neutral. And remember, the value here is going to be the name of an animation that we'll be making later in this tutorial. When we answer happy, we'll set the portrait to Dr. Green Happy, and when we answer sad, we'll set the portrait to Dr. Green Sad. Then when Miss Yellow speaks, we'll change the portrait to Miss Yellow Neutral, and of course we'll go back to Dr. Green Neutral on the next line. For the layouts, what we're going to do is have all of the dialogue for Dr. Green be in a layout where the portrait is on the left, and then for Miss Yellow, the portrait will be on the right. So we'll add layout tags for whenever the speaker changes, where left and right will correspond to animation names that we'll be making later. Be sure to save this and then we'll go back into Unity. If you click on the ink file for Dr. Green and something in the inspector doesn't line up, or you're missing the ink JSON file, you can right click the ink file and select recompile ink, which should fix either of those issues. Next, we'll drag the ink.json file for Dr. Green into the dialog trigger script for the green NPC. Now that we have some ink dialog written that's using tags, let's actually parse those tags in some C sharp code. We're going to put this in the dialog manager script that I had mentioned earlier in this tutorial, so let's open that file up. First, we'll create constants for all of the tag keys that we want to handle. This is a good practice because if the keys ever change, it's a bit easier to change them here instead of tracking them down all over our code. We'll create a private const string for the speaker, another for the portrait, and another for the layout. Then in the continue story method, which is where this script handles moving on to a new line of dialog, we'll add a line to call a method named handle tags and pass in current story dot current tags, where current story is a story object that allows us to easily traverse the ink dialog file. 
This will give us a string list of all of the tags for the current line of dialog. So right below we can create that handle tags method and it's going to take in a string list that we'll call current tags. Then we'll create a for each loop to loop through each tag for this dialog line one at a time. The first thing we need to do inside this loop is parse the tag into its key value pair. We can use this line to split the string by the colon symbol. According to the system we set up, this should return an array of length 2 where the first string is the key and the second string is the value. We'll do a quick defensive programming check for if the length doesn't equal 2, and if that's true, we'll log an error to let ourselves know that something went wrong with parsing this tag. From there, the tag key will be at index 0 in the array, and the tag value will be at index 1. I also like to include the trim method when doing stuff like this, so that way we clean up any white space that might have been on the beginning or end of the string. Now that we've parsed the tag into its key value pair, we can create a switch statement to route the tag key. For now, just to make sure everything's working as expected, we'll put some log statements in each switch case that will print out the tag value for that key. Back in Unity, if I play this and talk to Dr. Green, we can see that for each line of dialog in the ink file that has tags, they're being printed out correctly in the console. This shows us that everything up to this point is working as intended, so now we just need to handle each tag appropriately. We'll do this one tag at a time, starting with showing the speaker's name. Back in the Dialog Manager script, we'll add a new serialized field TextMeshProUGUI variable for the display name text. Then in our switch statement, we simply set the display name text, dot text equal to the tag value. Back in Unity, don't forget to drag the display name text object into the dialog manager display name text field we just created. After that, we can hit play, talk to Dr. Green, and as we go through the dialog, we'll see that the display name changes based on our tags. Next, let's handle the portrait tags. For organizational purposes, let's create a new folder in the assets directory of the project and call it animations. In there, we'll create another new folder called portraits. And in that folder, we'll right click, create, animator controller, and then name it portrait animator. We can then double click it to open it up in Unity's animator window. Then let's drag this animator onto the portrait image object in the scene hierarchy to add it as a component. We also want to open up the animation window in Unity, so if it's not already opened, you can open it by going to window, animation, and then animation. Next in the animation slash portraits folder, we'll right click, create, animation and call this one default. Then we can drag it into the animator window to add it to the animator. Make sure you're clicked on the portrait image in the scene hierarchy and that your animation window shows default as the current animation. Then from the art folder we can drag the default portrait into the animation. This default portrait will act as an indicator for when no other portrait tags have been used, making it obvious to ourselves that we're missing those tags in our ink dialog file. Next we're going to repeat this process for all of the other portraits we have. Creating an animation for each one, adding that animation to the portraits animator, and then of course adding the appropriate sprite for each animation. In this case there are three portraits for each character, neutral, happy, and sad. As you can imagine, if you have a lot of portraits, you may want to use multiple animators or organize things a bit differently. However, for simplicity's sake, in this tutorial, all of the portrait animations are going to go into this single animator at the base layer. And of course, be sure that the name of each animation matches the tag value being used in your ink files. To double check what any portrait might look like, you can go back to the scene view where you can see the dialog frame, and then move this line around in the animation window so that the animation shows up. Once all of the animations have been added, we'll hop back into the dialog manager script. Let's add a serialized field animator variable for the portrait animator. Then in the switch statement for the portrait tag, we'll replace this with portraitanimator.play, which is a method that will play an animation based on its name, and we'll pass in the tag value. Now back in Unity, be sure to drag the portrait image into the portrait animator slot of the dialog manager, and then if we go into play mode and talk with Dr. Green, we'll now see that the portraits are changing according to the ink tags as expected. Next, let's create a couple of different layouts for the dialog panel. We'll create a new folder in our animations folder and call it layouts. In that folder, just like we did with the portraits, we'll create a new animator controller and we'll call it layout animator. Then we'll create two animations called right and left. 
We'll drag the layout animator onto the dialog panel to add it as a component, since the layouts could potentially move around everything that's a child of the dialog panel. From there, we can double click the layout animator to open it up in the animator window, and then we'll drag in the left and right animations to add them. Since I dragged in the right animation first, that's what the default is going to be for our system. Then we'll click on the dialog panel in the scene hierarchy, and with the right animation selected in the animation window, we can hit the record button. For anything that's going to move when the layout changes, we need to go through and adjust the positional values just a bit so that they get recorded. In this case, the things that are going to move are the dialogue text, the portrait frame, and the speaker frame. The main thing you want to look for here is that for each of those game objects, we want these values to be highlighted in red to show that they've been recorded. You can change them in the inspector, or just move them around a bit in the scene view and change the anchor position back and forth to make them turn red. Once a position is recorded, it'll also show up in the animation window as a keyframe. This part is a bit tricky, and if you see some oddities when switching between layouts later on, it's likely that some value just isn't recorded in the animator, so keep this in mind if you have issues later on. After everything has been recorded for the right layout, we can hit the record button again to stop recording. Next, we'll switch to the left layout, and then we'll do the same thing, except this time we'll move around the dialog panel components such that they represent how we want the left layout to look. Once we've moved things around, and all of the positional values have been recorded, remember to hit the record button again to stop recording. Back in the dialog manager, we need to set things up just like we did for the portraits. We actually already have a serialized field reference to the dialog panel game object here, so instead of creating another serialized field variable, we can just create a private variable for the animator. Then in the start method, we can use the get component method on the dialog panel to get a reference to the animator. And finally, in our switch statement, we'll add the line layout animator dot play and then pass in the tag value. Now if we go back into play mode and we talk to Dr. Green, we can see that the layout is switching with the speaker exactly how we have it set up in our tags. So that's all working as intended, but you'll notice that if we go talk to the other NPC, who is using an ink file that doesn't have any tags, some of the information is carrying over from the previous dialog. It would be a good thing to reset the portrait, speaker, and layout information to default values when the dialog first opens, so that tag information isn't carrying over between NPCs. Back in the dialog manager script, there's a method called enter dialog mode, which gets called at the start of talking to any NPC. We'll just add a few lines here to reset the animators and display name text to some default values. And now we have a good indicator of when we're missing tags and things aren't carrying over unnecessarily between NPCs. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so more people see it. And if you want to see more from me, be sure to hit the subscribe button. Have an excellent day, and I hope this was helpful.